morning, everybody. Welcome to Grammar and Writing Lesson 85. So in our lesson today, we're talking about elaborating with facts and statistics. So what do I mean by elaborating? That means to fill out your writing, basically. As you're writing, you want to make sure you include lots of good, interesting details. So we've, uh, we've just finished a descriptive essay where you had to describe things, so you were including a lot of details about a particular person in that descriptive essay. So um, now let's talk about facts and statistics in your writing. Um, in your descriptive essay, you would have probably included a little bit of these facts and statistics as you were writing, and you may or may not have known that that's what you were doing. Facts are statements that can be proved. Something that you know for certain, you could go back, there's some kind of written record, you're able to prove that this is true, the person is still alive and you can talk to them or whatever. For example, your heart pumps blood through your body. This is a true statement, this is a fact, it's something that you can prove. You can uh, study the human body and learn that a heart pumps blood. The leaves of growing plants are usually green. Okay, you can go outside, look at the color. Yep, that color is called green. Most plants are green. There's a few that are red or purple, but most of them are blue, most of them are green. People use their legs to walk. Okay, the majority of, of people in the world don't walk on their nose or even on their hands, they use their legs. That's a fact. Go outside, look at somebody walking around, look at your brother or sister as they walk by. Yeah, they're using their legs. Some people keep dogs as pets. I had a dog for a short amount of time. You know, it's, a, it's something that you can clearly see, you can clearly prove that there are dogs and people have them as their pets. Now let's talk about what statistics are. Statistics are just facts involving numbers. Okay, so once you add a number in there, it becomes a statistic. For example, children aged 0 to 14 years are just 12% of the population of Germany. But in Kenya, the same age group makes up 40% of the population. So we see here we've got some statistics. These are facts that can be proven. You would take, um, <clears throat> excuse me. You could take a survey um, to find out these numbers. In fact, that's what somebody did. Um, and they would find out that 12% of the people, all the people in Germany are children from zero to 14. And 40% of the people in Kenya are children. It's almost half in Kenya. Here's another example. Today, there are about 3 trillion trees and 400 billion stars. So that means there's more trees than stars. Now, this is something that can be proven. You can go out and you can count the number of trees and the number of stars. And that's where somebody got this particular statistic. I don't know if they sat there and counted everything. I don't think that's what happened, but they were able to measure using various um, instruments and different things. So that's the difference between a fact and a statistic. So what's for your homework? You are to complete elaborating with facts and statistics, page 73 in your writing. So let's look at it together. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says recognizing and adding factual details. Read the following passage. In the first paragraph, underline the topic sentence twice. Remember your topic sentence is the main idea of your paragraph. Not your whole piece, not your whole paper, just that particular paragraph. <clears throat> underline the topic sentence twice, underline each fact or statistic once. The second paragraph contains only the topic sentence. Add five or six sentences that support the topic sentence. Make sure that each sentence you add contains a fact or statistic. You may use your own knowledge, or you may want to find facts in reference books. Okay, now I'm going to say there's an opportunity for bonus. There is a mistake in your direction, a grammatical error. If you can send me a picture 
of the grammatical error and like and circle it, circle what is the mistake in this paragraph that I just read to you of the direction, I will give you five bonus points in English. if You can send me the mistake that is in this paragraph. Okay? Okay, moving on. Let's read and follow the directions, or let's read the paragraphs and follow the directions. Hobbies can provide enjoyment, relaxation, and sometimes even fame and fortune. For example, as a boy, George Eastman was interested in photography. Later, he grew wealthy as an inventor of the photographic equipment. President Franklin D. Roosevelt gathered a huge collection of stamps. At the time of his death, his collection contained one and a quarter million stamps. These stamps were sold for $250,000 at a public auction. Almost any activity someone likes to do during spare time can become a hobby, but one choice stands out from all the rest. Okay, so that you have here in the first paragraph, your definition of a hobby, kind of, it's something that provides enjoyment, relaxation, and can even provide fame and fortune. So it's your pasatiempo, okay? So let's look at that first paragraph. What would be the topic sentence? What tells us what our paragraph is going to be about? It's the very first sentence, as it typically is. Hobbies can provide enjoyment, relaxation, and sometimes even fame and fortune. So it's explaining that. Um, excuse me. It's explaining that when you have uh, when you have a hobby, that this is what it can give to you, and then the rest of the paragraph is going to show you how a hobby can provide those things. So now we need to underline the facts. Let's look at the first sentence. For example, the second sentence, excuse me. For example, as a boy, George Eastman was interested in photography. Now this is a sentence that you could consider it a fact. However, I'm not going to this time, but you could argue to say that it was a fact. So I'm going to leave it up to you whether or not you will choose to say it is a fact. Um, but this is something to me that is more of something that's a little harder to prove unless you have the writings and the opinion of George Eastman, unless he tells you he was interested in photography as a boy. You'd have to be able to go back and somehow be able to prove that. Then it would become a fact. But you could say, well, yes, you could technically prove it, and so it is a fact. So that's up to you. You can decide whether or not you think it is a fact. Let's look at the next sentence. Is it a fact? Later, he grew wealthy as an inventor of photographic equipment. Yes, this is a fact for sure because you can definitely look up who invented photographic equipment and find George Eastman's name there. And you would know that he grew wealthy doing that. President Franklin D. Roosevelt gathered a huge collection of stamps. Again, this is a fact because it's something that can be proven. At the time of his death, his collection contained one one and one fourth million stamps. All right, is this a fact or statistic? That's a statistic because you've just added numbers into the mix. These stamps were sold for $250,000 at a public auction. Statistic because you have numbers there. Okay, so now your next part of your activity is that it says almost any activity someone likes to do during spare time can become a hobby, but one choice stands out from all the rest. So that's the topic sentence, the beginning of your paragraph. Now you need to add facts and statistics of your own. Your directions say add five or six sentences that support that main idea, but you need to include facts and statistics you can use them from your own brain. Remember, it has to be something that can be proven or you can use um, a reference book. So it's up to you. You can look it up on, the, on Google or something like that, but it has to make sense. It has to be part of the topic, okay? All right, so that's all for today. Have a great day. Love you.